And it is a great morning this morning. We have a special treat for you this morning. And good morning, uh, Facebook followers. It's good to see you guys. And also, griefers, if you're watching this morning down in Ohio, we say lo we love you and we miss you. Look forward to seeing you. Uh, and others all around the world who are watching us, God bless you. It's a great day today. We have Amy Ogston with us this morning. Let's give her a hand. Woo! All right. She's been, she's been touring with Taylor Swift, and uh, it's been great. No, she is a big name, though. She's a big name in the CareNet Pregnancy Center industry. Uh, and she is director of CareNet Pregnancy Center of the EUP. And uh, we had her last year, and we have her this year. She will be filling us in this morning on CareNet Pregnancy Center and what's been happening, some of the new ch changes and good things. But also, she will be preaching. She is our guest preacher today. So uh, she will be speaking on the, the theme, Rooted in Christ rooted in Christ. So I'm looking forward to that. I'm going to be taking notes, make sure she's theologically correct in every way, you know, because I'm such a good Pharisee, you know me. Uh, other things that are going on, I mentioned two to the crowd here, but, but for you guys, you Facebookers, we do have uh, t-shirts and shirts, Lighthouse, official Lighthouse shirts. You can't buy these in any stores. You have to get them here. And so uh, you could get them in pink or in gray. They're really, they're really, really cool, just to kind of give you a, a feel for the colors there. But they've got the logo on the front, our official logo, and uh, you can order these things. So just email us and let us know stuff, and then we can get you in touch with Sue, and she can give you the different sizes and prices and different things. But anyway, they're not, they're not terribly expensive, and you can get those. Some you can look for your little name tag that you guys can buy. But Sue is the person, to, she's the money changer. Our, our, our little Matthew. No, actually, that's, that's Con Connie is our little Matthew. She's assistant Matthew. So uh, anyway, other things that are going on, we do have a little snack sign up. We do, we do snacks during this. And I just wanted to say one more announcement, P.S. Lord, thank you for this beautiful day. Thank you for bringing all of our friends back to church. And I'm asking all of you to help us celebrate Numero Uno's birthday. Numero Uno. Whoa. Uh, Thank you. 
I think we start with the chorus. Where I'm covered by 
says you are everywhere O God you fill the heavens and the earth but only by invitation will you fill our hearts and we invite you now to fill our hearts that we may be truly in your presence that your word may instruct us that your love may encourage us and that you may change us Lord that you may change us by your power in the powerful name of Jesus our Christ amen so it is with great pleasure as Amy is turning on her device, making sure that we can hear you. Yeah, I think so. Sounds good. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So let's give a round of applause to Amy Ogsted this morning. Thank you. Right here. This. We'll get you a stand. Is this okay? Yeah, go ahead. All right. I'm not a polished speaker like Scott, so I can't do it without a stand. So um, I just want to thank you so much for welcoming me back. I was here last year on May 15th, actually, so just a little over a year and a week. Um, and when I was here last year, I was brand new to Karenet. And if I look back on that time now, I think I really didn't know what I was doing yet. And I, don't, I wouldn't say that I still know exactly what I'm doing, but I'm here and I can look back on the past year and see all of the good things that God has done in and through our center. And I'll talk more about that later. But I wanted to start out with um, talking about what Scott, what Scott was telling you about being rooted in Christ. So let me um, start this encouragement note vote not not vote note of encouragement to you that I'm not an expert on being rooted in Christ. I just have lots of experience of not being rooted in him and the difference between not being rooted and being rooted. And there is a difference. Um, so that's what I want to encourage you in today. So a few years ago um, I was on the staff at a church and I um, wanted to have a women's worship night. 
my position at that church, I wasn't the women's ministry director. I was actually the director of community impact and missions, but I had a heart for ministering to women. I have for a long time, and I still do, obviously, in my role. I get to minister to women every day, and it's lovely. Um, and at this event, um, it was a night of worship where women could come and be encouraged with a message and then also have a night of worship, kind of like what we just did. And then we were, would have food, of course, and all that stuff. But I, I decided to be the first speaker um, because I, it was my event. <laughs> and I decided that night to speak about being rooted in Christ. Now, I'm not repeating the same message. It's different. The basic principles are the same. That's a relief. I know. <laughs> I, I'm not just, I didn't go back into my notes and find it. Um, and the topic that I spoke about that night, it actually came to be very important. Um, in the months and even years to come. As the date that I shared that message was on January 20th, 24th, 2020. Within two months, our world was on lockdown. And each one of us encountered in one way or another this debilitating virus known as COVID, or coronavirus. And in one way or another, this virus has affected all of us, even now. Um, I think we can look back and we can see the devastation that it caused, but also there were some good things too. Um, one of them is the ability to view messages on Facebook. This kind of wasn't a thing before COVID, but now people all over the world can uh, be part of Lighthouse Church on Drummond Island, and I think that's a wonderful thing. But it, in 2020, it was a scary time. Looking back at the beginning of 2020, I remember thinking, oh, 2020, like 2020 vision. You know, if you have 2020 vision, you see, you see things so perfectly and you have clear vision. And I shared with the women that night how we had a great opportunity to take stock and decide where we were rooted. And if it wasn't in Christ, then I encouraged them to take, to make that shift. So our scripture focus today and my message is going to be in Colossians. Chapter 2, mostly. So if you want to go there, you can. Um, but I'll give you the references in a minute. And at that point um, in my walk with Christ, I truly believed the importance of being rooted in him. And I was, you know, I went to church every week. I was involved in Bible studies. I was in a small group. I listened to Christian music. I loved studying scripture. I actually did that on my own time as a hobby on my days off. Um, I just loved God, and I wanted my kids to know him, and I just wanted people to know him and his goodness. So what we're going to see is that in the book of Colossians, um, there's a lot to be said about being rooted. Now, this is where you can pay attention and make sure I'm being theologically correct. So <laughs> Colossians 2, verses 6 through 7, tells us, Therefore, as you received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted in and built up in him, and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. Colossians 2, 6, 2, 7 says, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. And then finally, Colossians 2, 4 through 8, the entire of this, those two prior verses. I tell you this so that no one may deceive you by fine-sounding arguments. For though I am absent from you in body, I am present with you in spirit, and delight to see how disciplined you are and how firm your faith in Christ is. So then, just as you received Christ, Jesus says, Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith, just as you were taught, and overflowing with thankfulness. See to it that no one takes you captive through hollow and deceptive philosophy, which depends on human tradition and the elemental spiritual forces of this world, rather than on Christ. I don't know if you noticed, but in all three of these passages, the word rooted and the phrase, as you were taught, is repeated. And we know from scripture study that when things are repeated, God's trying to tell us to pay attention. And I'm going to touch on that a little bit, why we need to pay attention to that. So here in the UP, we are surrounded by trees. I think that's a lovely thing. How many of you love trees? Good, you're in the right place. 
I came from the Lansing area. We have trees down there. <laughs> but there's just something about being up here in the UP. The trees are everywhere. And there's different varieties, and they're just beautiful. I have always loved trees, even as a child. <clears throat> they were just, they just seemed so strong and so beautiful. And the way they were the best places to build forts and seek solace from a very confusing and hard childhood. But as an adult, they speak to me and represent so deeply the importance of being rooted in Christ. Something that I have learned is that understanding how a tree grows and how it is rooted is very important to what being rooted in Christ means. If you envision a tree that grows in the ground, some trees grow hundreds of feet tall and they even may grow hundreds, several, several branches during this lifetime. The strong roots of the tree, um, the strong roots of the tree are, are the foundation and allow the tree to grow tall and strong. Whereas weak roots prevent the tree from growing. And I'm sure living up here, you have seen root systems and trees of trees that maybe aren't down, rooted down deep where they're supposed to be. And those trees are sagging or they're dying or they're weak or they eventually fall. Trees that um, are planted near, um, in areas where there isn't water, they're not going to live either. They need that water. They need, they need soil and they need water to grow down deep. Roots provide the foundation for trees to grow and they provide necessary nutrients to the soil that the trees need and to eventually produce fruit. The tree's roots are essential to its growth. Why are the roots of a tree so important? I mean, we just touched on that, but I did a Google search because I wanted to make sure I was telling you exactly what you need to know. So a quick search on Google told me that tree roots anchor the tree in the soil, keeping it secure and stable and absorb water from the soil. When we apply this tangible example of a root system for trees onto the importance of being rooted in Christ, it looks something like this. Being rooted in Christ means that we are anchored to him. Being rooted in Christ means that he will keep us straight and stable. Being rooted in Christ allows us to feast on the living water that only he provides. Strong roots create a strong tree that produces needed fruit to better its environment. We are called to better our environment, right? Um, I was thinking of your t-shirts and you have the lighthouse and that's your logo, right? Mm -hmm. Your logo is a lighthouse. And I was thinking, be the light. Lighthouse Church, be the light. You can't be the light if you don't have deep roots. Mm -hmm. um, we have too much important work to do in this lifetime to not have strong roots. When trees have weak root systems, the results are insecure, they're insecure, lacking water, nutrients and water, and the inability to bear fruit. And that is the same for us when our faith is not rooted in Christ. Let me put it this way. Going through the years of 2020 and even into 2023, for me, brought only, not, not only COVID and its consequences, but it also brought to light unhealthy systems in my family and also my place of employment. Both of which I treasured deeply. Sometimes it was all too much to bear. Being confronted with the things that were damaging and hurtful about those systems, recognizing where I had contributed to the damage as well as being hurt by con contributions was a pain and anguish that I had not ever fully known. And to be dealing with all three at once almost seemed to be unfair, except that my faith was rooted in Christ. And um, when I look back on that time, I thank God for those deep roots. Um, I touched on, I did have a difficult childhood and my faith started as a child, but it didn't grow and it hasn't, um, it didn't grow and become fully rooted in Christ until I was older. Um, I firmly believe that because of my faith, I was able to get through that time. He sustained me when others were pointing fingers at me for setting hard boundaries that required hard change from others. Mm -hmm. And he sustained me when I got word of hurtful and untrue things that were being said about me because of from people that I trusted. 
and he sustained me when my heart broke in a million pieces. He has sustained me in this past year in the wonderful craziness that I have had at CareNet, all the while healing from the life-changing years of 2020 to 2023. The sustainment that Christ offers is available to each one of us who trust him as Lord and Savior, and that means each one of you. It's never, ever too late to start. Even if you have been someone who you've gone to church your whole life, been every Sunday, never missed a Sunday, but you know maybe, maybe your roots aren't as deep as they should be. It's never too late to start. You may not have been taught the importance of being rooted in Christ, and I didn't fully grasp this concept until after I was 40, but it was most definitely solidified in the past three years. This is something that we believe so deeply in at CareNet, and part of what we do is to share and model what it means to be rooted in Christ. And some of the things that we do is we just model to our clients. This is what it looks like to be rooted. And I always like to share with people, just because you're a Christ follower, just because you made that statement of faith, just because you were baptized, just because you go to church every Sunday, just because you tithe, just because you say that you're a Christian, it doesn't mean that life is going to be easy and you're not going to have hard, hard things. You do have hard things as Christians. I think we could all agree with that and we could all say, yeah, I've gone through this or I've gone through this. But there is a difference between going through hard things with Christ and without him. And um, that difference is that, is that rooted part. One of the, um, in my opinion, I would say that Scott probably agrees. I do already. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the most important way to be rooted in Christ is in reading scripture. It's so important. I, I don't have a Bible with me. I have my phone. But I have a Bible on my phone. And um, it's just easier to carry to church. <laughs> but taking that time to spend time with God and reading his word is so important. And there's all sorts of wonderful ways that you can do that quickly. I don't think God cares so much about the length of time we spend with him. And to be honest, when you're rooted with him or rooted in him, you're always with him. You're always in that communal relationship with him. Um, I was talking, you know, trees are very important to me. Whenever I see trees, they make me think of God and how he created them and how they're perfect examples of being rooted. And so I find myself looking at trees and thinking, are their roots deep? And it, and it makes me think, okay, God, this is, this is an example you've given me that my roots have to be deep in you. And in nature, too. We live in such a beautiful part of the world. There's so many things that we can look at. Scott and I were talking, or Kirk, no, who and I? Somebody, we were talking about the rocks. And me, yeah. We were talking about the rocks, and I was just thinking, how wonderful is it that God created different colors of rocks for people who love rocks, <laughs> such as me. <laughs> but he, he's so good, and you look at nature, and you see him everywhere, and that's a way to be rooted. There's not one exact formula to be rooted in Christ. Um, I would say don't let anybody ever tell you that you have to have these checklists of things that you have to do to be rooted in him because God is so creative and so merciful and that he has created all these ways and he speaks to our hearts in the way that he designed us. Um, so you don't have to follow a checklist and look for him. Look for him in the mundane. Look for him in the beautiful. He is there. So it's reading scripture is important. Um, one tool that we have started introducing to our clients, I've also introduced it to my staff and volunteers, is an app called YouVersion. Are you familiar with that? What is it called? YouVersion. YouVersion? Uh -huh. um, it's a Bible app, but on it, it has um, daily devotions. There's also all sorts of Bible studies on there that you can do. But <laughs> something that I use it for that I love, it's called a daily streak. It's very quick, it takes less than 10 minutes, and then it has a, a scripture, and then it has a pastor, there's a different pastor every day, or somebody, a Bible teacher talking about what the scripture means, and then a time of prayer. 
and um, it, then it counts your days. And I love seeing how I can do daily streaks. The highest I've gotten to is four, and then I would I forget and I have to start all over. But still, it's exciting. <laughs> but that's just a quick way, um, especially with our clients who don't know who God is or have a, a wrong perception of him. This is just a really simple tool. They have their phone on them all the time anyway, and um, just it, it, a good way to introduce them to starting to develop their roots in Christ. Other ways to be rooted in Christ is exactly what you're doing today. Going, attending a church, belonging to a local church is so important. Not just um, because you're going, it's not a checklist, but it's because you need each other. We all need each other. Amen. God did not create us to live this life solo. He created us for community. So belonging to a community of believers is so vitally important, especially when they know your struggles and you trust them with your struggles. They can encourage you and, um, and pray for you and just be a support for you and then you for them. It's supposed to be two-way. Another way um, that is wonderful being for rooted in Christ is listening to worship music. And um, there's all sorts of ways that you can do that. You can, there's Christian radio stations, The Promise FM. I'll give a shout out to them. <laughs> They're wonderful. They did a, um, a Michigan's biggest baby shower event in January, and our center was one of the recipients. And so they came, and they were just wonderful. But we get their station up here. Um, but there's online um, sources for listening to Christian radio, too. Um, and then just guarding your heart from things that aren't of God. And the more you get to know him, you know what's not of him. Um, and let the Holy Spirit guide you. And when you feel that check in your spirit, you know, hmm, this may not be the best thing for me at this time. Always know that God is not pointing his finger at you, but he's welcoming you into him. And he knows what's best for you, and he loves you so much. Um, and he desires for you to be rooted. So those are just some ways that we talk to our clients to share with them about being rooted in Christ. But those are things that we have to remind ourselves of too. I have to remind myself too. Um, it's a continual moment by minute, moment, hour by hour um, system. But God is good, he is faithful, and he sustains us. Many of our clients um, come to us as a result of some tough situations and our staff and volunteers willingly and lovingly hurt along with them while encouraging them to grow um, toward Christ and becoming rooted in him. And how we do this is through the services that we provide. If I could ask how many of you know about CareMat? Show of hands? Okay, good. Um, a little bit of history. Our care net center is actually the very first care net, uh, pregnancy center in the state of Michigan. We've been around for almost 41 years. Uh, last year we celebrated 40 years of um, serving clients in the eastern upper peninsula. And in the past year especially, there's been a lot of misconception about what pregnancy centers do. I actually had an interesting email conversation with an organization that I was reaching out to to help us with promotion and fundraising and we started the dialogue and then she emailed me back and said I'm sorry but we can't work with you because we don't associate with agencies that discriminate against LGBTQ and some other um, oh and discriminate against a woman's right to, um, right to choose and I thought it was so interesting and my initial thought was, well, I'll just find somebody else. But I felt like God was like, no, you need to engage her. Because people need to know what you do, Amy. You don't discriminate against people. And so started the dialogue. And I asked, I said, help me understand, why do you think my center in Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan discriminates? And she um, copied and pasted some things on our website that she thought were offensive. And so I respectfully said, well, this is actually what this means. <laughs> truth, the truth is that we do not discriminate. We don't. Everyone is welcome at our center. And they can refuse to be prayed for if they want, but guess what? We're still going to love them. We don't discriminate. 
pregnancy centers, good pregnancy, now there are some pregnancy centers in the past that have not been great, and that's unfortunate. But pregnancy centers as a whole are wonderful institutions for the community. We do so much more than what I think people initially think. They think pregnancy center, oh, they offer pregnancy tests. Well, guess what we do? We offer pregnancy tests. Well, let me just share with you what we do at CareNet, at our CareNet. We offer pregnancy tests, consultations with our nurse, ultrasounds, mentoring sessions, one-on-one -on -one classes with mentors, online classes, texting services where we text quite a bit, even after hours, even on weekends, even on holidays, with people reaching out to us with the needs. The topics of classes that we offer range from the basics of parenting to more specialized topics, such as budgeting or Bible studies, if clients are interested. And we do have a few clients right now who are working through Bible studies after working with their mentor for a while, and they've learned to trust their mentor and trust that what their mentor is doing is good. And that has been a beautiful thing. Amen. We also, one of my favorite um, parenting classes series that we offer is it's a series, it's an eight-week series called Parenting Without Shame. And it's actually a requirement for all of our new clients. When they sign up with us, they have to go through this series. And it really helps them to understand, you know what, you may have been raised by parents who didn't parent you the way that you needed. But that's in the past. Let's deal with how you're parenting now. Let's deal with that and then move on so that you don't repeat this cycle. And our clients have loved it. It has become very popular and actually that's kind of what prompted us to make it a requirement for all clients who come through our door. No matter what stage of parenting they're in, this is what we start with. And I love when clients do this lesson or this series. It, it even speaks to me. I have two adult children and two teen children, and it still speaks to me on how I can parent them in the way that God wants me to. Um, if um, We also offer post-abortive support for women who have abortions in their past. This just, past, this, just this past year, we have started offering group classes. We have a monthly class called Music and Movement with Anna, where we have a wonderful volunteer who comes in, she's a music teacher, and she does music and movement with moms and their kiddos. And we have other class, uh, group classes too, um, such as, um, uh, a fin we had a financial uh, class that was scheduled, but actually we didn't have anybody sign up for that, so we rescheduled. Um, but we have a mom and me craft, um, we just had a mom and me craft day this past week. So we're starting to offer group classes, not only for our clients, but we're extending this to the community mm -hmm. <clears throat> because we really truly desire to make an impact in our community. That's cool. Also, um, and a lot of this was started in the past year, by the way, so it's been a very busy year. Um, but we did, last year, we did Thanksgiving baskets for our clients. Uh, we'll be doing it again this Thanksgiving. We had a Christmas shop last year, and we'll be doing that again this year for our clients, where they earned points through the classes that they take. And then we give them a gift of um, an additional 20 points, and they were able to shop in the Christmas shop for their kiddos, and that was a lot of fun. Um, and all of these services are provided free to our clients. And that's because of the support that we receive from individuals and churches such as yourself. Lighthouse is a supporting church and we are there very thankful for you. So thank you, yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you. So did I teach you anything about Karen that you didn't know before? Good. All right. We're done. <laughs> no, see, I love talking about it because so many people, they just don't know. And what I have found is that even in the city of Sault Ste. Marie, so many people don't know that we exist. So we are working really hard to try and get the word out there that we do exist. We truly care about the people in this community. Um, we truly do. We, we more than just helping women who, a woman who's coming in with a, unexpected pregnancy. We want to help her to understand her value and who God says she is and help her to understand when you're rooted with him, in him, your life will change. It won't be perfect, but it will, it will change for the better. We want to show the love of Christ to every person who walks through our doors and trust us with delicate situations in their lives. We take that so seriously at CareNet when clients come in and they, they're trusting us with their stuff. 
And so all of our services are confidential. We take great care to make sure that um, our clients' information is kept confidential. We make all of our, or we, we don't make, we require all of our staff and volunteers to sign confidentiality agreements that they will not repeat the names of any client in public. Or if they happen to see a client, we will never say, hey, you know, how are you doing? <laughs> but if the client says, you know, hey, me, how are you doing? We just talk to them like we're friends, but we just take it seriously. Um, <clears throat> I know that the work that has been done in the past 40 years has been impactful, but I wasn't there for the prior 40 years. I've only been here for the past year, and I'm seeing the differences in our clients. I have a, a quick story I want to share with one of our clients, and again, I'm not going to say her name, but she, um, when I, I started seeing her about a year ago, when I was brand new to my role at CareNet, and she um, was very rough around the edges, we'll just put it that way, and uh, hard in heart, um, angry, and just in a tough situation. She did not want to talk about Jesus, didn't want to hear about him. Um, she informed me that she was a Christian, but she didn't need to go to church or talk about him. And her husband um, refused to step in the door of our center because of an encounter he had had with a previous staff member who was trying to force, um, force Jesus on him. So he said, I will never go back in that center again. And so he would bring her every week and drop her off, but he would not come in. And so over the months that I was seeing her, um, she started to trust me a little bit. And actually, I got her husband to come in because I would go out to the car and talk to him. <laughs> um, kill him with kindness, right? <laughs> um, and then eventually, um, I had to start, actually, I, I had to start focusing more on the administrative side of my job. And so um, our center coordinator started seeing her. But all that being said, a year of consistently working with her, encouraging her, mentoring her, doing parenting classes with her, loving her, um, providing emergency services to their family when they had some things come up that were kind of awful. Um, she has started, she's on her second Bible study now. And she, she actually, um, a few, uh, a while ago, the very first thing she said when she came in to talk with her mentor was, what? What do you mean Jesus is God? Explain this to me. <laughs> so uh, her mentor got to explain the Trinity, <laughs> which is not a light subject. But <laughs> So we were actually really praying for her the next week when she I said, okay, let's pray for you because that's a hard concept to even, you know, for anybody to understand, but someone who's brand new to wanting to know who Jesus is. Mm -hmm. So it's been exciting it, just to see this client in particular, just because she was there right at the beginning of my time there, and then a year later to see her walking in the door with her children, with a smile on her face, with um, an openness that wasn't there before, and that's because of God. We're his servants. He's working through us, um, and uh, we're so thankful for that. So in addition to showing the love of Christ to every person every single day, we are preparing for some exciting things at Karenet this next year. But I also wanted to let you know, we did just finish a remodel project that um, we did. The way we had our center before was our medical clients had to walk between the two buildings. And so we've done a remodel project. So now our clinic is all in one building and our um, the Part of the center that used to be called the Mart is now called the Crib. Um, my 14-year-old son came up with that name, so we call it the Crib. And the clients, that's where they shop. Um, so that's all in one building, and then the house part of our center is where we do our um, mentoring classes and where the offices are. Um, and we're so thankful because it has really helped us to really um, make things very nice for our clients when they come in. And to celebrate that, we have an open house coming up on June 1st from 5 to 7. And I know it's a little bit of a hike for you, but if you happen to be in the area, we'd love to see you just so you can come in and see what we do, see the facilities. Um, there's flyers out on the table that I brought for that. Another thing that we're doing the first part of June is called Diaper Palooza. We're going to be giving out diapers to anybody in the community um, who needs four dozen diapers. And that's just a way to 
let people come in to see the services that we have to help them. Um, we always tell people that when they come in specifically for our learn and learn classes, is we, d we just want to help parents be the best parents they can be. And we believe that the services we offer do help that. Um, and in fact, we're actually getting recognition from um, DHS with them sending their clients to us because they're seeing that there's benefit in the clients utilizing the resources. That's we fantastic. Have. Yeah, it that is. is fantastic. It is. Oh, sorry, my daughter's FaceTiming me. Stop it. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> I'll call you back. <laughs> and we have our annual fundraising yard sale um, July 30th and July through July 1st. If you have donations that you'd like to give us to put in our yard sale, we'd gladly take them. Um, they can be dropped off the week of uh, June 30th. I think that's the 25th is the first day of that week. Our biggest fundraiser, which we're really excited about, and which I really want you to plan on coming to if you're still in Michigan in October, um, it's going to be an improv comedy night where we have an improv comedy group coming from the Lansing area. Um, and they're going to be entertaining us um, on Saturday, October 14th. And it's just going to be a fun night. Um, does anybody ever, did they ever, you ever watch the show? Um, Whose line is it anyway? Oh, yeah. Okay. So this group, they're called Free Shrugs. This is what they do. So if you come, you might be part of the show. And I think that will be fun. But it's just going to be a fun night of um, the people who believe in the ministry that we're doing to come and to support us in a big way and to have fun, too. Um, and then we'll be doing our Christmas shop and our Thanksgiving uh, baskets for our clients this, later this year. And I would encourage you to just watch... Follow us on Facebook, look at our website, or in the mail. If you aren't on our mailing list and you would like to be, there are some envelopes out at the table. You don't have to put money in them, but they're just a quick way. You can put your address in so we can put you on the mailing list. Um, I wanted to just share with you some ways that you can support our center. Uh, the biggest way is through keeping us in your prayers. Uh, we have seen this past year how prayers um, have made such a huge difference in the work that we're doing. So I would ask you to put us on your prayer list, keep us in prayer. Specific prayer requests right now, our sonographer um, recently resigned, and so we need a new sonographer. Um, whoever, God, we trust that God has the person in mind, so we're just praying that somehow he or she finds a way to <laughs> find themselves to us, but they need to be ministry-minded. Um, they're not going to get rich working five hours a week at CareNet, but it's such an important ministry. So if you know anybody who's a sonographer who might want to help, send them my way. Um, but we also have a praise in that we have just been given a brand new ultrasound machine through an organization called Preborn. We went through the process, the application process, um, the training, and then we had a site visit last week, and then we got the final word that, yep, you are going to get a brand new machine and we're expecting to get it in early June. And that is right. a huge praise to, to God. So um, lots of great stuff happening at CareNet, and it's such an honor to, to be part of that ministry. So I wanted to leave you with one final thought on being rooted, and it's from Ephesians 3, uh, 17 through 19. So that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith that you being rooted and grounded in love, may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with the fullness of God. Amen. Thank you so much for having me. All right. stay up here for a Q&A session um, and also Facebookers we're going to leave the leave the, the post on uh, so that you can actually if you want to you can write in the comments if you have a question and I don't know Sue are you following so Sue will pick that up if you have a question too that hasn't been asked uh, also just to let you know that you can find a link to the website to the CareNet website on our our website page, our home page, uh, at www.lighthousechurchdrummondisland.com, uh, and it's right there. You can just follow down the announcements. We are supporting also Bay Cliff Health Camp, 
uh, for kids, special needs children uh, this, this particular quarter. Uh, we've got baby bottles. Those of you who are familiar with uh, collecting for CareNet, uh, we've got the world famous baby bottles that you can collect and put your money in. And those are out there as well as pamphlets, like Amy said. But uh, please do, please do keep them in your prayers as uh, there's just a lot of stuff happening. Uh, they're extending, like Amy said, extending their ministry out to the community and becoming kind of that Acts chapter two Christian community where they're loved. Mm -hmm. I mean, where the whole community, doesn't matter what your beliefs, background, anything, where they go, wow, those Christians, they're so cool. They, they love so much, you know, and they give free stuff away. Do you still do the points thing, where they yeah, earn points? That's what Amy we do. didn't mention, you know, she, she mentioned the mark where they, they purchase stuff. It's all free. Yeah. It's all free. These guys, they'll go, they'll do classes or Bible studies or some sort of deal, and they'll earn all these points. And it's with the points that they purchase mm -hmm. all these items from free diapers to cribs to all sorts of crazy stuff that they get for free. And this is a community outreach yeah. that is so cool. Thank you for clarifying that. And also, yeah, I didn't talk about, I mean, yes, prayer is the most important way, but we also take donations. <laughs> like money, so, man. Yes. You know? um, but yeah, the points are how our clients earn um, items for their children. And, um, but we also, we also offer like household goods because we do have dads <laughs> and our clients that come in or we have um, clients whose children are, we, we, try to provide clothing up through like size five, six, but sometimes five-year-olds wear bigger sizes. So we try to help in any way we can, but sometimes we have clients who come in who have teenagers and they're in desperate help of how do I handle this teenage child? And um, we give them like laundry detergent. They earn laundry detergent or um, toilet paper, things like that. So How about chocolate? Can you get like <laughs> chocolate? Is that possible? Yeah, we have chocolate oh, okay. that we offer. I'm oh, there. Have a snack. Um, be volunteering yeah. next week. Yeah, yeah. yeah, thank you. That'd be great. So questions for Amy? Things, places, any questions that you might have? Yeah. Thanks, Kevin. Yeah. Um, you said that you've been up there in existence for like 40 years. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it takes 40 years to <laughs> earn the trust of uh, uh, doctors and healthcare providers and so forth. Do you feel like you have uh, a good working relation, excuse me, working relationship with the local yeah, I think that we do. Okay. Um, one thing that we're going to be starting soon is I've worked out um, a kind of, not a, I don't know if it's a partnership, but we have a, um, um, we've reached out to the OB department at My Michigan Health, which used to be War Memorial, and we are offering mini layettes to all mamas who have babies in their department, and it will have a bag from us that will say the crib on it, and then we'll have some diapers, information on our parenting classes, um, some clothing, just things like that, just to give to these moms, but to let them know that we're here. I think a misconception is that people think that our clients are all maybe um, lower income level, and that is that is true to a certain extent, but that's not entirely true. We want to help anybody who's having a hard time with parenting, just to help them, um, to encourage them to become the very best parent they can be. So like I said, we don't discriminate. We don't discriminate either way, even if it's from someone who you know, has a very, who's wealthy. If they need our help, we're going to give it to them and the services will still be free. But yes, in answer to your question, yeah. yeah, we do. I love that about you guys too. Um, that, that you don't discriminate, that you welcome all people. That seems so Jesus, you know, it just, it, you don't have to jump through hoops and you have to sign up and commit your life to Christ yeah. and be a Christian in this certain way. Mm -hmm. That it's just, it, you're wel welcoming all people. And I, I really admire that about Thank you. you. So. Yeah. Other questions? Address, physical address. Physical address. 1420 Ashman Street in the suit. In the suit. Or the little pink house on the corner. It's really of a cute house. Ashman, yeah, it's a little pink house. As you're, as you're heading kind of down the hill towards the bridge, it's on the left. Yep. As you're heading into town. Yep. And our address and contact information is on the website too. Yeah. And the brochure. Right? Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Other questions? You know, your analogy of the trees is interesting on Drummond Island mm -hmm. because we have the solid rock that we're <laughs> yeah. The trees do not root very well. We have trees that every time the wind blows, they bend way over. Well, and the I, only things that holds them up are the strength of other trees around them. Oh. Yeah. So yeah. each tree may be rooted here a bit, and here a bit, and here a bit, and together they hold each other up. I think there's a sermon for you for next week. <laughs> well, as a matter of fact, <laughs> thank you, Greg. Yeah. You are my favorite. You know that. Uh, yeah, next week is Pentecost, oh. actually, <laughs> interestingly enough. And when you said created for community, I thought, there's the title. Yeah. So that's the title, created for community. Yeah. And we'll talk about, just like the trees, how we hold each other up. Uh -huh. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Perfect. Yes, that is good. Yeah. Knuckle bump. Boom. Okay. If you park for your yard or your driveway or something, the wind comes up those trees. If the wind comes, yeah. 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 Yes. <laughs> yeah. There's Other. just so many biblical applications to what you just yeah. said. Oh, my. <laughs> my mind is like. <laughs> I started weeding my garden, you know, to get uh -huh. put things in, and I'll I'll get a weed that's like this long, but the but the root will be like four times as long as oh, this yeah. weed. Uh -huh. I want to be like that weed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that root that goes down. The weed yeah. rooted deep. Yeah. Other questions? I just wanted to comment, those trees you're talking about, you can also say they're rooted in the rock. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So the yeah. Down, oh, all rooted rock. in the rock. They're rooted in the rock. Yeah. So. Yeah. Excellent, yeah. Mark. That yeah. is good. Well, thank you again. If you have any questions that you want to talk one-on-one, -on -one, I'm going to be hanging around for a bit, so I'd be happy to talk with you. But um, thank you again for having me. This is a lovely church. It's a lovely community of believers, and I think you're all very fortunate. Give us a chance to pray for you. Yeah, thank you. Let's pray together. Pray for Amy and for Karenette. Lord Jesus, you love your babies. You make that very clear in Scripture. You love your babies. And we... Bless, we bless Amy, all the staff, all the workers, all the volunteers, all the clients, the whole structure, the whole ministry outreach. May, let it be a strong tree, just like in Psalm 1, a strong tree planted by the rivers of your grace and your mercy and your compassion. Continue to bless CareNet, Lord, in so many ways. And we know that you've got a stenographer out there someplace who just has a heart, heart for this ministry. And we thank you, Lord, that that's the way that you operate, that you surprise us by your grace. And so we bless Amy. We thank you, Lord, just for the privilege of being able to be one of those supporting voices and supporting uh, donors. And we thank you, Lord. We bless you. We bless Amy. Thank you for letting her be with us today. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Thank you. Another hand.